Apparently, Amazon is filled with fake reviews. Can you imagine that, Will? The nerve. Can you imagine? I see. The thing is, I don't really read the reviews on Amazon. I'm gonna be honest with you. You don't? No, no. I don't really read the reviews. Okay. On I. Uh, I think for me, the older I get, Will, the more I look at my own experiences with a particular brand when I'm starting to think about whether or not I want to invest in a product from a particular brand. I'm just uh, leveraging my own personal experiences. And I understand not everybody can have experiences with all brands. And so you look to others in order to to figure out uh, what might be good or bad. Yeah. But it's it's the trouble in it is the individual doing the review it might have different a different perspective than you. They might have a different use case than you. They might have a different threshold than you mm. for what they what they expect or what could be because like often you could read a negative review and the person's like it came out of the box with a little speck underneath or the paintwork wasn't per and you're like yeah some standards are super high. It's too, yeah. it, it's, you don't know the person. Yeah. You don't know them. You never saw them. You never had a conversation. It's not like a pal of yours that you feel like, okay, I know this guy well, and now I can consider the source. But do you uh, see the ratings? Are they worth something to you? I, I would say I look at it less and less. I think the only way it's really going to be a standout to me is if it's absolutely terrible, like one star or something. And I'd be like, geez. But, but, but you want to know something? It's almost had the opposite effect to me in some circumstances where I would look at Yelp or something, which I don't do that often, but I would look at Yelp or something and I would read the actual reviews. I'd be like, this person is just a jerk. They'd be, they'd be like, ah, oh, unbelievable, this restaurant. They took, because I'll go in and I just, I'm curious. Yeah. And they would go in and say, I waited 40 minutes and this and that. I'm like, you're just, there's so many variables. And maybe I'm too optimistic. Maybe I'm giving yeah. people a chance here. Yeah. But, Again, if it's too many, if it's a bunch, I understand. If it's everybody has a negative experience, it's super useful to avoid a place. But oftentimes I'll see one guy has got five stars and then the next person's one star. People are so polarized. Mm -hmm. Like no one uses- That's why uh, Amazon has like critical reviews, you know? Yes. Like those are useful. I read them more so- than Yeah, but, how, but, but those can be fake too, Will. Because yes, it could they be, can all be fake. It could be the competitor of that company yeah. that comes in and wants to dominate the rankings and kill the sales on their competitor's product. Yeah. And so then they go in there and say, horrible. And they just rip it in half, take a picture. And how do you vet this stuff? Again, so long as you don't know the person, it's very difficult. Well, people vet the critical reviews. That's why they're like the top of the top is what I've come to know. And that's why I depend. Yeah, on. dude. But even then, like, yeah. You think are about right. this, Will. Think about this, Will. You and I, we have a company, yeah. all right, and and we're in a particular marketplace. I don't know. Let's say uh, headphones. We have a headphone company, mm. and all of a sudden, our competitor is slamming with the amazing reviews. And I'm not saying we would ever do this because you and I would not do this. Yeah. But we go in, we purchase a pair, right? The pair shows up at the door. We crack the headband in half. We snap a photo absolutely terrible horrendous quality blah 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 takes two seconds and 20 bucks and we just wrecked the company it's too easy well we, we we didn't wreck the company well the reason why there's so many reviews is like it's it's there for a reason no unless there's like like there's over 50 percent of fake reviews which i i don't well that's exactly what's actually coming out in this article is that is that true well, what's coming out in this article is it's it's a tremendous number. There's a Facebook groups with huge numbers of members offering uh, 560 requests every day for payments for positive reviews of around six dollars. Oh, it's six dollars to do a positive review. And in the past, that we've seen job postings show up hmm. where companies got lazy and they're actually hiring people just to write reviews right. from big brands. Now, the, the positive one isn't as bad, I guess, as the negative one. But what I was trying to display to you is if the negative ones rise to the, to the top and you could actually consider it feasible to really attack your mm -hmm. restaurant owners. There's, like, been, uh, there's been stories of it where a competing restaurant like, owner will right. do a negative review of the competing rest. Yeah. It's too hard, man. Yeah, especially if you just want to get something, you know, top of mind. You don't really want to read the reviews you just want to get it 
It's, so. it's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah. You you have to know if the thing that you're looking at or reading, you have to consider the source. And the longer that we don't do that, same thing in social media. You read a comment from somebody, totally negative mm -hmm. comment. You don't consider the source. You just feel terrible about it. Who is this person? Why are you taking advice yeah. from a person you don't know anything about? There mm -hmm. are There's a wide variety of people in the world. And I'm not saying everybody's crazy. I'm not saying everybody sucks. But some people are negative. Some people are in a bad place mentally mm -hmm. where they're sitting from behind their monitor on their chair and it all looks the same as it comes through to you because it's formatted the same way mm -hmm. and yeah. there could be somebody in the reviews for the record who's super thoughtful did their work has something really awesome to add that absolutely happens yeah but the problem is their thing appears the same way as somebody who maybe hasn't done all that yeah yeah in the same way that a negative criticism could come from somebody where it's really totally useful and that person has considered the whole thing or that criticism could come from somebody who's just having a bad day and wants to take it out on someone else. Mm -hmm. This is the trouble, whether it's a social media post or an online review or whatever else, not knowing the person responsible, not having the track record. Now I know Amazon does have a way to click on the user and see their other reviews and Yelp does the same thing, super users, yeah. this and that. They try to find ways to do the thing that I'm talking about, but typically the way I would interact with a product page is a lot more superficial and fast. Yeah. And in that moment, as you look at the star rating or whatever it happens to be, and on Amazon, by the way, the star rating really impacts mm -hmm. where a product surfaces in a search result. Uh, it's just not always feasible to vet the user, click through on the user. It depends on the price of the product, how much time you're going to spend investigating those reviews. And it's not really the intent. But apparently, this is a thing that's growing not just on Amazon. It's also it's also there on Walmart. It's on eBay. And it's it's skyrocketed because it's a business. And, and mm. people are sitting at home looking for things to do anyway. Mm -hmm. And you give them six bucks per review. And they're chopping out, you know, 20 reviews in a day. It's not a bad, uh, it's not a bad gig. Yeah, 50 reviews in a day. It doesn't, it doesn't take all that long. Uh, Amazon told CNBC that it uses powerful machine learning tools and skilled investigators to analyze over 10 million review submissions weekly, aiming to stop abusive reviews before they are ever published. Uh, still, the company recently removed over 20,000 reviews after an investigation found that the top Amazon reviewers in the UK were all engaging in fraud. Mm. So, look. I think the principle, the premise is fantastic, but I think the policing is way more difficult than the average person would imagine. Mm. I remember when I used to do these videos, WTF products that I would find on Amazon, mm. and inevitably you would read the reviews and the reviews were all just jokes. And I would get a laugh out of it. Mm. They'd be like, this cable saved my marriage or yeah. something completely irrelevant. And you'd be like, how did your machine learning let that one buy? Mm-hmm. And it's all, it happens all the time mm -hmm. that it will be some kind of wildly expensive product, some joke, and then the whole review section is just jokes. Yeah. So if your machine learning is can sort out all the that should be number one, mm -hmm. and it doesn't. So I don't have a lot of uh, confidence. And like I said, in my case, I'll talk to people I actually know uh, that I that I can vet as human beings, or I'll. I'll look at my own experiences with a brand or a product. And then other times I'll just be okay with a certain amount of risk involved yeah. with the product. And I'll just be like, all right, we'll see how that goes. And I'll check YouTube. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. I'll go check YouTube and see, you know, a user that puts a face on it at least. I don't know. Overall, you just got to be diligent into uh, what you purchase. And if you have some sort of um, standard or subpar standard, then that's what you're going to get, right? Like if you don't do the work in terms of research. Yeah, and, it, and look, it's unfortunate. I mean, there's even products from big, big brands that sometimes it doesn't work out for you. Mm -hmm. And that's another weird one. Even for me making these videos over here where I could have a terrible experience with a product and I might have got a dud. I might have got one out of, you know, a hundred that's busted. But if I make a video about it, I just put that in front of a million people. Mm -hmm. And that may not be indicative of everybody's experience. Now, sure, it's like, how out of all the people did I get the one that's broken mm -hmm. or has an issue? And we've seen this with smartphones that have problems. And, you know, we've you see how these videos blow up and and all the rest of it. But it's like 
you don't have all the data in front of you. You don't know how many got sent back. You don't know how prevalent this is, mm -hmm. this particular issue. So you're going to go on there and see, all you have to go on is your personal experience yes. at the end. That's the only thing you know to be certain. Yeah. And so it turns out that as useful as these things look, they do lim they are limited mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Anyway, it can be useful, but let's just understand the limitation. Yeah. And let's just leave some open, let's leave some room for the unknown. Mm -hmm. We don't always know, man. No, you're right. I hear you. There's more to the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm.